Hello there, fellow people on YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks to the training boost being existed, we have the opportunity to play a really, really cool deck called Bielzemon with the addition of training cards. You know, BT14 didn't directly get any Bielzemon support, but they get those training cards, which makes Bielzemon a lot more fun. I, I, I always will have a soft spot for Bielzemon because in Yu-Gi-Oh! I was a really big Lightsworn fan. That's all about milling your deck and all that stuff. So, Bielzemon, I'll always be playing Bielzemon, always be having fun with Bielzemon. And that might not always be the best deck in the room, but, you know, it, it's always a good time. So, I'm going to show you guys my current iteration of Bielzemon. You guys can tell me anything in the comments. And, of course, please like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell and the smash potatoes. That way you know when all these amazing Digimon videos do come out. So, we're playing Pokemon still on Leash and Mill 2. We're playing this build for this egg for two reasons. One, we're not playing the typical stack build that most people play. We like to be unique. You know, we like to test the boundaries, think outside the box. But also, Pogamon has an illusion mill too, which means that if you're rushing your opponent, then you're going to get more mills, which will help you. But if you leave a Pogamon on board, there are interactions that take place where you can interact on your opponent's turn because you're they're milling on your turn, on their turn. It could end their turn. You could do some annoying things. So Pogamon is really cool and a good egg for that. So yeah, there you go. That's all for that. On to the rookies. We're playing four copies of the good Imamon, the one that lets you warp into Beals when attacking, if you have 20 more cards in trash, by paying through Emery. And then your turn wants to return if you mill a card and pop a level three. It's a good, good inheritable, pops things all the time. Then we're playing four copies of this Imamon on deletion mill three. Uh, and again, this is another Imamon that rewards you on your opponent's turn. If they pop it, they gotta deal with the consequences if you mill something really cool. So, four copies of Impmon, you know, they either rush your opponent with them or they gotta pop them themselves. And that's very, very nice. We're playing two copies of Imp X. Now, if we were playing the stack version, you play four of this. Absolutely. Not up for debate. But as this is not a stack version, as you're not really trying to build stacks all the time, two is fine. Sometimes you want to play it, or evolve it, and when you do, you can discard an option to add back a Digimon to your hand, and then when attacking once per turn, mill two. It comes up on certain applications only. Uh, I'll tell you what those are when we get there. And lastly, we're playing one copy of the limited Impmon from EX2. When you mill it, you can mill three more cards. That's why it's limited. Also, if you play it, reveal top four, add an Ayamako, and it builds Mon Bond at the rest. And then inheritable 3,000 DP is pretty cool too if you lose one. So yeah, the one copy of it I think is perfectly fine. Uh, I wish we could play more, but we can't. On to the champions. The four copies of Wizardmon. When you mill it, gain memory. Very good card. Also, when attacking, you stack your deck by look taking a purple card in your hand and revealing it and playing on top. Helps you with other things you want to mill. So that's pretty nice. And then we're playing four copies of Witchmon. Witchmon always mills three and then gives you plus 2,000 DP during your turn. That's what it's there for. We don't play Wizard X. Uh, Witchmon just gets us more value, and that's fine. Not really a big deal. Next, for ultimates, we're playing still four copies of Balmon. Balmon here is very good. When you evolve, you mill three, and then the turn it evolves, you get a Bielzemon back from your trash. If you have it dead, if it's killed, if you have 10 or more cards in trash, including it's stacked, by the way. So, like, Balmon can, like, get you there into a Bielzemon if they kill it. They're going to give you good incentive to not kill it, obviously, because they don't want a Bielzemon back, right? So, Balmon usually sticks around for a turn, then you evolve into a Bielzemon anyway next turn, or something, and then you just continue to combo off. So, Balmon's a very good addition. And we only play the four still. So, back in the day, that was a little bit more wild of me to do, but now with training boosts, we're fine. We're, we always have it if we need it. Most of the time. Sometimes you don't, it's okay, but it is what it is. Megas, we are playing three copies of the Bielsmon from EX2. When you mill it, bring back a Nipmon, and then when evolving and attacking, mill two cards, pop a level three. For every ten cards in your trash, increase the level by one. I have been playing four of this card forever in Bielsmon since it came out, because this card is your wolf. If you mill it, you get your Impmon back. And that's a very powerful ability. However, concessions had to be made for including four copies of training boost. So, yeah. Three Bielzemon, I think, is fine. 
I, I wish there was still four, but we can't. We can't always get what we want. In the famous words of Jagger, we're playing two copies of this Bielzemon. This Bielzemon is your main boss monster. Bielzemon is the one you want by the time you're warping with him once. This card does is it evolves for four. When you evolve it, you mill four, and then all turns once per turn when cards are milled, you gain memory for every ten cards in your trash. Also gets sec plus one. That was nice. Here's the thing, right? Bielzemon is a card that rewards you for having like Pogumon as an egg and the BT2 Impmon as a Digimon. Because if that stuff dies and you have this Bielzemon on board, you're going to gain memory. It could pass over the turn or could, could put your opponent in an awkward spot where they have to deal with the Bielzemon or something. I've definitely done plays before where like you have a Bielzemon stack, right? And you have this Bielzemon trash. The Bielzemon dies. You get back to Bielzemon. Then you trigger Pogumon. You mill two cards, and you gain a memory. And that's just really freaking cool. Also, it's one of the cards you want to use with your Imp X, because when attacking mill two, always triggers this, because, you know, it's milling cards. So yeah, this is your big boss monster, Bielzemon. Only two is fine. Um, it doesn't do anything when it's milled. But yeah, you want to evolve into it, and you want to see it. So that's pretty good. Next, we're playing two copies of Bielstar from the Bielzemon starter deck. Again, we were playing three, but with training boosts, we had to cut some costs. And Beale of Stars went from three copies to two copies. This card is still very good. It costs 13 to play, but you reduce that cost by four for every 10 cards in trash. Has an opponent's turn effect that whenever they attack, you mill a card. And then all turns per turn, when you mill a card, bring back an Hitmon, it gains Rush. Very powerful card effect. Uh, forces your opponent to think twice before attacking. And it combos with your own stuff as well. You mill some stuff. It's pretty good. For the last two Digimon deck, uh, I'm still on the theory of one Beals X and one Beals Blast. These cards are bricks. These cards, you hate to draw them in the early game. You don't want to draw them in the early game. You want to ideally mill them. But, you know, back in the day where there, there, were, there were games where I drew like Beals X or Blast or multiple of each or whatever, playing two of each. And I just had no time for that shit anymore. I don't want to deal with it. So by playing one copy of each, unless it's like the last card in your security, you're always going to see it eventually, uh, and you're reducing the chance of you breaking with it in your hand. Either copy of it. So that's what they're there for. Blast mode is your main unsuspend swing for game button, and Bills X burns security when you evolve it, equal to the number of opponents' cards, number of cards in your trash, uh, every 10 cards in trash. So usually burns two, sometimes builds three. And when Beals X dies, you get them on back as well. Not a big deal. Usually the turn you're doing Beals X in the game. So yeah, we love these two cards. This is your combo, your one-two punch to finish off the game. And we love to see it. Next, we're playing four copies of Iron Mako. Iron Mako is a very powerful card that when you play it, you will top four cards, add a Digimon in your hand. And then when you evolve, once per turn you suspend it, and then you put a card on top of your deck in memory. So that triggers really well with your windage evolving mill stuff. You digivolve, you stack a card that you want to mill, you mill it. It's really powerful. It's a good tamer. It does what it wants to do. It's powerful. All right, on to the options. We all saw this one coming. Four copies of Wisdom Training. I play four, and some people think, Mario, you're on crack. You're literally on drugs, injecting yourself with needles. What are you doing? Wisdom Training, by the way. All these training cards, they don't just add Digimon to your hand. They add any purple card to your hand. You can add I am Mako to your hand. Hello? That seems really good. You can add a Death Slinger or a Rivals Barrage to your hand. Hello? Like, that just seems really good. And then you get the value later when you evolve, because you are going to do evolutions. Just because they're not playing the stack version doesn't mean you're not going to do evolutions. You're going to do one or two evolutions or three evolutions as you cross the game. Wisdom Training will help you with that one evolution that you do, or two evolutions or whatever, if you do have multiples. It's a card that grabs your combo pieces as well, and that's why Wisdom Training is really good as a four of. What I have thought about doing, though, I have thought about cutting one of these for Calling, because I don't play Calling anymore, but uh, that's a conversation for a different day. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet or not. Uh, it's a really good card, though. We're, of course, still playing four copies of Rivals Barrage. Uh, when you mill it, put on the battle area. And then you can crack it with delay to add back a purple Digimon to your hand is good. And then main effect, security effect, blow up your opponent's Digimon at the highest level. So as if it's a tie, you choose. That's pretty cool. And then we're going to play four copies of Death Slinger. Death Slinger is really good as well. You mill it, you get a memory. 
and then its activate main effect is you or when you activate it, you just blow up something level four. If you have ten cards, if you have ten cards in trash, you increase level by one. So if you have thirty cards in trash, you pop sevens, and in security it activates that main effect as well. So that's pretty good. And finally, playing two copies of the Wave of Darkness. This card when you evolve into mill three, and then uh, the other effect does never happens. But in main also, in security it activates the main effect. So if you hit security mill three. The max of your opponent's turn, they hit in security by milling cards that could damage your opponent's resources or memory gauge, depending on what you mill, uh, and triggers your Beal Stars. So it's really, really powerful. That's that's Bealzamon. That is literally the Bealzamon deck. I love it. I love Bealzamon. It's not going anywhere. And Beal Star, I love this variant deck so much. This variant just feels to me so much better than the stack variant. I know it's personal preference. I know that I'm a minority in my thought processes, but hopefully you guys try this deck and let me know what you think. Anyway, that'll do. See you later. Goodbye. See ya. Bye.